Jose Cernuda with GreatDivers.com and in this video I'm going to talk to you guys and show you how to do a frog kick. Okay, now there's two main kicks that you're going to use when you're scuba diving. I have another video that tells you about the flutter kick. Actually, I have another one that tells you when to use each one. But the frog kick is the kick that you should be doing most of the time. It's the kick that looks the way that a breaststroke looks. So it's basically where if these are my feet again, my knees are going to come in and around. Okay, and the reason why we want to do this most of the time is because of the fact that they come in and around and kick, you actually build in a resting phase. Whereas with the flutter kick, which is the other kick that looks like this, you're just constantly working all the time. So what I want to tell you before I get inside the water is that with this kick, and I'll show you how this looks in a moment, your knees need to come in, they need to go around. And the most important thing that I see with students when I'm teaching this kick that happens is as the feet come in and around, you want to make sure that your heels have a moment where they actually face each other. So if this is, just imagine that your fins are actually oars. And if I was in the water and I'm moving my oar like this, what's gonna happen is I'm not really gonna be able to get a lot of force in. However, when I turn it and I move into the water, now you can see that you're actually able to row. It's the same thing with your fins when you're doing the frog kick. So when you bring your knees in and then go around, you wanna make sure that you face your heels towards each other so that you can get some power out of the kick and then come back into your resting phase. Okay, so that's the key to doing a really efficient frog kick. Again, the frog kick is the best kick to be doing when you're scuba diving because it has a resting phase built in. And even before you get into frog kick, you wanna make sure that you get yourself neutrally buoyant. You'll see that in a moment when I do my frog kick, I'm already neutrally buoyant. But um, let's stop talking about it. Let's get inside the water so you can see what this looks like. Okay, now that we're in the water, what I wanna do is I wanna show you how the fin kick, how the frog kick is actually going to look. So what I'm gonna do is, and of course I'll do this once I'm underneath the water, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my knees in towards my body and then my feet are gonna come around. And remember, before my feet come together, you wanna make sure that your heels are actually pointing towards each other. So the kick looks like this. It comes in, around, and then the heels face each other for a moment before they come around again. So this is the way that the kick should look. In, around, heels face each other, kick. In, around, heels face each other, kick. And then you've got this gliding phase built in as you're coming in, which is the important part of the frog kick because it gives you a resting phase. It gives you time to recover. And that's the reason why the frog kick is so efficient because once you're underneath the water, you're actually gonna conserve your air doing more frog kicks than you would flutter kicks. So let me go ahead now. I'm gonna put my scuba gear on. You'll see what it looks like underneath the water, but just wanted to show you real quick on the surface before we go underneath the water.